Hey everybody, welcome to season 4 of What's IGN Crushing On? I'm Karen Walby Solomon and I'm your host, and we're here to talk about what's hot in pop culture. Hello, and welcome to episode 3 of What's IGN Crushing On? And I'm joined today by Gabi Zietzman, who is a writer and a reviewer. How are you doing, Gabi? I'm good. It's a very nice, chill Sunday today, so I'm excited to (laughs) be joining you on your podcast. It's so great to have you. So for those who don't know, Gabi reviews a lot of of film and TV, but she has done a lot of Oscar-nominated content this year, so I thought it would be great to chat to her about the nominees that were released this week. It's a mixed bag, so so let's get into it. So for I just want to I'm just going to mention the main ten, and then we can talk about the rest. So for best picture yeah. this year, we have Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley. The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. So what was your thoughts? What are some of your favorites that you from this year's nominations? Oh, I think 100% Dune. I think far surpasses many of them. I think just mm. in terms of scale and the, the vision that uh, Dennis had for this movie was just mind-blowing. And I think it's been such a, like... Out, something having such a massive sci-fi epic outside of the Disney uh, family mm. I think you know it's been a while since we've gotten that and uh, Dune is such an interesting uh, universe to explore I haven't read the books but I, I watched the mini series like when I was younger mm. it used to like um, constantly rerun on SBC3 so I like <laughs> actually ended up seeing it a few times because it just ended up being rerun in SBC 3 a few times. And I just really loved the story, you know, even though, like, the, it wasn't, like, the best show, but I th- always was so mm. intrigued by the story. And him coming in doing this epic, like, he, he actually, like, he turned down other movies to do this movie. It mm. was, like, and you can see that passion in it. And in terms of just the special effects, it's just such clever special effects. They're so simple, but they're so powerful. And I also loved, I know a lot of people complained about how slow it was. Mm. And I, to me, I thought, no, that was the brilliant part about it. Because you have so much time to just immerse yourself in what's happening. And this landscape, these yeah. beautiful, I'm, I'm originally from Namibia. So just give, uh, give me like a desert landscape any day. <laughs> I love it. And like afterwards, you literally feel like, you had sand all over you like you felt like you were in that landscape and I think people who complained about it being so slow it's like I don't think you experienced really what he wanted you to experience Mm. and I felt like he needed to go in with that open mind and obviously the music was also so interesting it was like really like different type of music that you weren't Mm. expecting I won't say it always worked but like it was just like so interesting and then I just thought it was cast so well. I wasn't too on board with Timothy. I can't say his name. Timothy. <laughs> Timothy. <Chalamet. Shama. laughs> <laughs> Whatever it might be. I, I honestly, it's it's the one hype person. Like I don't get it yet. Mm. Why people are so into his vibe? But I did think he did it so well in the show, except when it was any physical stuff. You know. I think there was one scene where he was like going over this one guy, like doing all these stunts and this and the thing comes off and you show his face. It's mm. like a vision he has in the future. And I'm just like, do not see this boy doing any of, <laughs> any of this. <laughs> so I would say it's a perfect movie, but I just think in terms of that cinematic experience, I think we've been yeah. lacking that a lot in the movies um, outside of the, the Marvel stuff. Mm we've been lacking that cinematic uh, like thing in the movies. And I think with the pandemic, like I think June was just the movie, I think, to really bring cinema back to life again. Mm. And I think for that, it should 
really, I think, sweep the Oscars, which is also why it's such a travesty that he didn't get the director yeah. nomination. I yes. don't get it. This movie is so much about his vision, mm. and I just don't understand why he didn't get the director nomination but get the Best Picture nomination. It makes no sense. I also think that it's such a it's it's a good thing for like genre films for Dune to be nominated. I think it's a, mm. it's similar to like the Lord of the Rings in that you know it's it's different and it makes and you know it's it is such a like an epic. And and I agree with you. Like he should have gotten the nominee for because it's good because he directed it well. Exactly. If like I don't think another director could have yeah. brought that to life. What he exactly. did. Exactly. They called it like unfilmable, and you made it filmable. Exactly. So I'm um, like, he should be. I do think that if part two does well, I think he will win the award. I, I mean, I, okay, I don't so. know what you'll be up against, but I think that like he, you know, I also think it's. He, all of his movies have done like really well or it's like critically mm-hmm. well so i think that you know he's 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 his time is coming even if it's not it should be but it's but it's it should not. have been this because i think just in com- it's not a to me it's not a strong year for oscars um there wasn't a lot and i think it is also to do with the pandemic mm-hmm. and like movies and you know all hollywood slowly getting back into the groove of things but i do feel like out of all these movies i think that was just the most impactful in terms of cinema you Mm. know the oscars is about the cinema of Mm. of it in my opinion i think um you know and i feel like compared to the others i don't think they had that impact as much as dune did and west side story so west side story okay so i have never liked the story a West Side Story. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it's never been my like. I love I love musicals. Like, mm. oh, I love a musical. <laughs> and for some reason, I never, I really never liked West Side Story. I've seen it on show. I've seen it now in the movies, and I just, I don't see the appeal in terms of the story. But mm. in terms of what Steven Spielberg did with this film, I think was phenomenal. Again, I thought it was like a throwback to old Hollywood with big dramatic sets mm. and oh, some of the lighting and the cinematography in it. I felt it was amazing. And the actors, except for the main guy, um, <laughs> Ansel, he, yes, he was like the most ob out of. Every, like everyone else, you know, they deserve to be there. They were so phenomenal. They did their part so well. And there's him all being around, <laughs> being carried by everyone, basically. <laughs> and it's hilarious because of all the con- all the stuff that's happening mm. outside of the film around him. It's so funny that he's not... A- I didn't even know he was in the film, to be honest, because he's been completely... Yeah, like, like no marketing. Uh, he's been taken out of the marketing completely and it's so fun like when I watched the movie it's like what is he in this I was like so confused because <laughs> he's also the main guy and then yeah. I realized oh, it was because of why why they did that but even then I was like I don't know why he got cast I I do mm. not understand the guy who played his best friend who is a theater he comes from theater yeah. I thought he should have been the lead. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> he is like super good looking. He knows his stuff inside and out. Even though he did play the best friend character so well, mm. I don't get why he didn't get the lead. I wonder and, if it's like, a, like, you know, where they always say that if you have a lot of unknowns in a movie, you have to have like one actor that everybody knows. But then that blew up in their face because the one actor that everybody knows is is the one that that nobody that people didn't want to see. Exactly. Uh, but, and from in my opinion, they already had Steven Spielberg. Like, yeah. I think his name, they didn't need an actor. I think he mm. is, he's big enough. He is. And it also was interesting that he would take on a project like this. Um, I do see it was a passion project for him as well, because he, it, he growing up, he said like the all the original movie was like quite pivotal mm-hmm. for him and um, fostering his love for movies. So, and you can see that in the film. You know, there's so much passion in it. I just 
think that it didn't come out at the right time mm -hmm. for for audiences and that they they were it wasn't the time for it i think um, okay. even though it has like really powerful story and especially you know the world the way the world is i think it's and it's very updated i felt like you know it's made for the modern audience it's re mm. it's it's revitalized definitely and I don't know. It's just, I, it's just a story. I just don't. I can't get on board with the story. <laughs> it's so weird. I the just, Romeo and Juliet it, vibes. Juliet, like <laughs> I just don't. I'm not. I also feel like I don't. The the music also is not so big for like I don't. Oh. I don't know what it is. It's to me. It's, so it's a personal thing, you know. As a critic, you're like you have yeah. to sometimes just review the film for its for what it is and the production and the, mm. the, the cast and, you know, the directing, even though personally you're like, I wouldn't have watched this film just because <laughs> it's not for me. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know why I don't like West Side Story. And I've, I've, like I said, like I've watched it on stage as well. And I don't know, there's just something that doesn't <laughs> resonate with me. I don't know. I think for me it's that's very like... strange. <laughs> Like Power of the Dog, like I was like I, I thought it was such a like beautiful, well done movie, and I, like critically, I could see how, why it was so good, but it just didn't have that like for me like it did for other people, and I feel like it's um, a personal thing. To be honest, I only lasted an hour, and when I saw there was another hour left, I was like, I can't. <laughs> I was falling asleep. I was like, I don't understand what this movie is about. <laughs> and I also, I agree with you. Like, I thought the cinematography was gorgeous. Mm. I just, I don't get the story. I don't, I honestly, I didn't finish it. I like, I don't know what happens, but I just couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. When I saw another hour, there was still an hour to go. <laughs> I was like, I can't. <laughs> I have so... You know, as a critic, you have you watch so much stuff, and yeah. so when you don't have to review something, and you watch it in your own time, and it does, and you and you're forcing your way through it, then you you switch off, yeah, you switch know, off so know. fast because you you're like, I don't my, <laughs> exactly. So I don't understand how it's sweeping the awards. To be honest, <laughs> I, I, I think it's it. I think it's very well made, and yes. and I've heard a lot of it people is. like love love it, and. You know, but I just, I do think it's like a me thing. Like, I was just like, it's just something. Maybe I need to watch it again. But there's just something, which is why it's like sweeping all the awards. And in my view, I gave it like four out of five because it's like, I needed that kind of like, I love this to give it like a five out of five. Mm. <laughs> I think with West Side Story, I gave West Side Story five out of five. Mm. And I know I didn't love it, but I could see how people could love it you know what mm. i mean yeah um, but power of the dog honestly if i had to review that i would have hated life <laughs> i was i tried so hard because everyone was going on about this movie and i just could not sit through it i, I love this honesty. Actually, <laughs> and at one point i was wondering if it i know sometimes gender comes into play sometimes and mm. i felt like maybe to be honest, all the people who love it, majority are men. <laughs> yeah. And the pe and I I was wondering, like at one point I was like, I felt like that maybe, that as a woman, and how that the one woman character in this whole show mm. was written, I think that might have been part of it sometimes. Mm. You know, sometimes th there's like a certain energy that, you know, you're just like, I don't don't get it. Yeah. You just <laughs> like, it's I, like a disconnect. I, yes. And then also the other film I so surprised to see any most nominations for was Don't Look Up. <laughs> yes, exactly. How did it get a Best Picture nomination? I feel like Compared it is. Compared to like other films, like even Spider-Man, that should have gotten a Best Picture film nomination, but Don't Look Up, which like, came out just before the Oscar like I didn't even know it could it was in the running yeah like no it like barely made the cut I just don't get it 
I don't I think like it's a bad film. I, I thought like it's a, it was an interesting film. I really liked how it was written. I do think um, the writing nomination mm-hmm. for screenplay, I agree with that. I do think like I thought it was written really well and interesting, but not best picture, not in, not in any way. And I don't think any actors got even nominated no for best like none no, of them so how did how did that get into best picture how i think it's, I think it's the adam mckay thing i think the, the academy really likes adam mckay and mm. all of his films vice i can't remember what's the one before that money ball or no the uh, other one was wasn't big Ryan, short big short yes wasn't big Guys short one. I did enjoy Big Short. Me too, um, I love. It's my favorite. Of I it. like. I, no, I was very surprised. I didn't think it would have been my vibe, but they mm. really made finance. <laughs> In that regard, I think he did an amazing job on making a really boring thing mm. watchable. Like I, that, I thought was brilliantly yeah. done. No, it but is. But with Don't Look Up, I felt there's like a lot of ego in that film. Yeah. And even though I thought there were moments I thought were brilliant, mm. but as a whole, not not best picture. Same, like I laughed for that and I enjoyed certain parts, but I didn't think it was a mm. gate film at all. I didn't. I thought it was like a bit too on the nose. Like you know, it's like I'm in this bubble and I know more than you, and I'm gonna be laughing at you. Which, I mean, satire is not. I feel like satire is a little bit more subtle than that. So that's yeah. why I, I think for me, I, I didn't think it was anywhere close to being a gay film and or anywhere close to being a best, like a best picture contender. But yeah, a lot of these exactly. films, I didn't think, but especially that one. I mean, I thought a lot of them were good films, but, but as you said, maybe it's just a weak year and we're not. It's and, a weak year. Mm, I, I want to ask you about best actress because i have i don't think i've seen any of the, okay now i've seen being the hardest but to best actress this year we have uh, jessica chastain olivia coleman penelope cruz nicole kidman and Kristen stewart so um yeah. so i have also not seen any of those films i feel like spencer? maybe it's not, no so except spencer so yeah. so that so what i want to say is that everyone i haven't watched except spencer and i I hope Kristen Stewart takes it home. Mm. Even though I haven't seen the others, I do. But that film was so good. And I'm, I'm, I'm also, again, I'm sad that film didn't get more uh, nominations mm. than it did. I do think it was very experimental and a, definitely not a film for everyone. But in that regard, that film spoke to me on so many levels. And I was, I loved it. absolutely loved it. And... I also don't get no cinematography and no, um, I don't think it got a costume. Did Did it get a costume nomination? I don't think it did. Um, No, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. That also Mm -hmm. a travesty. And, and even though she does make the film, like she is definitely the biggest component that makes that film amazing. Mm -hmm. I am really surprised it didn't get more love and stuff. And, I wonder sometimes if people are still obsessed with her Twilight era mm. and still, you know, same with Robert Patterson as ba- who's going to be Batman this year. It's like, again, it's like they have these judgments for like they break out roles, you know, like, mm. and I just thought Kristen Stewart, I've always loved her and, mm. and I, I never liked Twilight. So it's completely her post twilight work that's yeah. why i love her and i just spencer to me was just such a beautiful film and it was just like a po it's a poetic film you know it's like p- watching poetry the mm. most beautiful shots there were shots like i would want to hang in my house and i really hope she she beats everyone <laughs> to the punch <laughs> um and I, but i'm worried that she won't get it I think Olivia Coleman probably she she's always a favorite and I yeah. think I think she's going to take it even though I haven't seen the film but I I hope there's like a chance for Kristen Stewart to finally mm. get her due and 
she put so much into that role so much and the same way like i just want to before we like mm-hmm. go on to like snubs and stuff i just want to talk about the um the best actor and then we can go on That's good. so the best actor is javier badem benedict cumberbatch andrew garfield will smith and denzel washington and yeah. they're making it sound like it's 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 will smith versus benedict cumberbatch like this is what i'm getting really? i don't know um <laughs> i honestly think tick tick boom should win everything and <laughs> me too should have been best picture nominated oh, again and should your, have been ever. Yeah. I, your, I also feel Tick Tick Boom had all the snubs. Can't believe mm-hmm. it didn't get pissed picture again. To me, that's another, it's like a cinema film, you know, it's about the cinema of it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I love the movie so I, much. I was blown away. And I thought Andrew Garfield, yo, he just embodied that role. He was there. Mm-hmm. And I, I honest, I hope. I think he should be the num like in the uh, one of the top contenders mm. in my opinion. And even though I haven't seen Macbeth, which I really want to see because I don't have Apple, but uh, Apple TV. But from what I've just seen a bit of, I also feel like it should be the one he should get an Oscar for, just because it's like this traditional Shakespeare story. But it looks so cool, mm. and he definitely looked like he brought something different to the role that we have seen. And yeah. you know, also having a black actor in this very traditionally white space getting an Oscar for that. Mm. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen Oh, um, yes. yes, and yes, <laughs> you know, I love that film. I thought it was good. Was it Mikai Pfeiffer? Who was it? Mikai Pfeiffer. Um, I think it was. Was it not? Was it Naomi Kai Pfeiffer with Julia Stiles? Isn't yes, that one? with Julia Stiles. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I love seeing that, you know, and even mm. though Othello is very much about race, but in Macbeth, just seeing I, he, he's also such a great actor. I mean, you can put him in anything. Yeah. <laughs> He'll blow it out of the water. <laughs> it's so true. But I, I, like, this is a film I think you should get it for because – it's something very different, not what you would think you would have won an Oscar for, if you know what I mean. And I love mm. that subversion of it. And that's why I really also, between him and Andrew Garfield, I think that would be the best, best mm. picks. Um, Will Smith? I, wish, I, I don't know. You know, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> He's a really good actor, um, but I sometimes feel like he goes for these very oscar bait movies just so you can get an Oscar. Mm. I feel like, you know what I mean? He's not there for the mm. film exactly, but he's there. F- like Leo used to yes, be. Yes, exactly. And now that Leo has this Oscar, he's, you've seen the, the track change. And now you've seen you see it. Look and I think once Will Smith gets his Oscar, I really hope he comes back to comedies. Because mm. he shines in them I- for me. I think so too. I think I think that Will Smith is a very rare, like blockbuster actor. I don't think that there's a lot of them right now. Like mm. The Rock, Will Smith, and I feel like Will Smith is like he's held that place for so long, and he can still do it. Um, I do think he was really good in King Richard. Like I thought, like I forgot it was Will Smith at times. So which 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 made me think that that, that okay, he was quite good, but um, he but like. I also am like, you know, if he wins his Oscar, maybe then he can. And, and I also don't know when he's going to have a chance to win again. I'm like, I mm. know. I can tell you without a doubt, Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be in 20 more Oscar-nominated movies. Exactly. Like, he's good in Power of the Dog. Uh, he's very good. But I think that he's going to have a lot more chances. Will Smith, I don't know if he's going to get another chance. He's, <laughs> first, I, I don't know if he's, I mean, maybe you're right. He's going to do more Oscar Beatty movies. Until he gets or, his Oscar. Or he's just going to go the other route. <laughs> but um, I don't know if he's, he's, he's going to have another chance again. Okay. I, if it was me voting, I've actually, I've actually seen all of these ones. I didn't think Javier Biden was good in being their card at all. Uh, I think like, that's not a even a little bit. one for me. Um, I was like, they could have nominated somebody else. I don't know who, but somebody else. But if I had a vote, I would also vote for Andrew Garfield. Like, I thought he was 
perfect. So he was so good. He, I was, I was in like a ball at the end of that film. Yeah, I was, <laughs> and that was because of his performance. Like it was a good film, um, but also, but also like yeah. his performance was just mm. top tier for me. But no, exactly. but okay, let's let's talk about about snubs quickly. Who like who do you think should have been nominated? Other than what we've already mentioned mm. that hasn't been nominated, I feel that wasn't nominated. I mean, I feel like Lady Gaga got a bit of a snub for House of Gucci. I know it's not the mm. best film. Like your uh, what's his name? Jared Leto was so bad. I was like, he was in his <laughs> own movie, separate from everyone else. I don't. It's, it's your, that was a bit scarring. Um, but Lady Gaga was just great. Like, I really loved her mm. in it. And I feel like she def- she deserved a Best Actress nom for that. Like, she did not I think, the Golden Globe, I think she... Where did she get her Best Nom? She did get a Best Nomination somewhere. And, yeah, she got a, quite a few. Um, mm. SAG, I think she got BAFTA as well, mm. maybe. I don't know. So but she I- was in the lead. That's I find it strange nomination. that she didn't get the Oscar nomination. That I mm. it's it's a bit odd for me. And then um, with Dune, I wouldn't say the actors probably needed uh, deserved some, but I do think uh, Jessica Ferguson should have gained be, be, mm. should have gotten Best Supporting because she carried that role. Like she, um, her role was also much more amplified from the the original. Like, mm. you know, she got a lot more substance and she makes you care about Paul, the main guy. You know, yeah. she is the emotional crux in that film. And she that scene where she's outside the door while um, her son is getting like that torture device thing from the scary lady. Oh, the lady, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and the, her performance from outside that door was so mm. good. I would, you could feel, you felt everything she was feeling. You know, she's like trying to hold it in, but she's like breaking. And I really think that just that one, that scene alone, I really think she deserved a Best Supporting Actress nomination. Mm. Um, and then, what was that? another snub? Oh yeah, obviously Dune director is I think mm. the biggest snub. And then um, I thought Raya and the Last Dragon. I felt like that movie just came out at the wrong time because I thought mm. it was so good. And I think the music in it was so gorgeous. You know, it's such a beautiful soundtrack and I can't believe it didn't get a best score and a uh, nomination. And yeah, I feel like, you know, that that is a film I felt like you got schneid when it came out, you know, f- because of the pandemic. And yeah. I felt like if it came out any other time, I thought I think it would have been such a big movie, bigger than it it was. And I just think there was like I just felt like there was a lot of animation this year. I don't know. I know there's probably always a lot, but I just felt like there was a lot of good animated films that came out this mm. year that 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 it just sort of like fell by the wayside. And the next, the, the new, the, the hot new movie everyone was talking about, and then it like got forgotten about. Yeah, okay. um, yeah, like uh, Mitchell's versus the Machines is hilarious, and Love it. you know it's so good. And I was like, and not everyone <laughs> like it. a lot of people like were like, oh, what's Mitchell's versus the Machines? Like so many people missed it apparently. Mm. Um, and again, I think it also came out during a time when there was like so much other stuff even though it's on Netflix yeah. and I think it did do well on Netflix, um, but people forgot about it. Like, mm. and I think, and it was also such a unique film, you know, it was like unique animation. Yeah. So I also really dug that one. And then, oh, another snub, uh, Eternals for special effects. Mm. I don't understand, even though I d- like, I think the, the, the thinking was probably because it's so dominated by more um, Disney in terms of Shang Chi mm. and uh, Spider Man, Spider Man. Um, so probably we're like, <laughs> you know, trying to not but give Eternals it all, there, all but the but gorgeous yeah. visual <laughs> effects. Like it was mm. so beautiful and so beautifully done and unique as well. Like I love special effects that are, you know, quite unique. And I thought, mm. and I also think the hate that Eternals had got was completely unwarranted. 
I thought mm-hmm. it was a Same. it's a good movie, and there are worse Marvel movies. <laughs> so many worse. And so I many. really liked the diversity of it. You know, and it's such an, a diff. It was a new, different take for the for the universe. You know, something different. So yeah, and. I also thought that such a cool direction in terms of the special effects, you know, it's like something different. We haven't mm. really seen it in Marvel. So I thought that was a, also not a bad snub. And oh, and then for best song, I know they like, it's a gorgeous song that they nominated for From Encanto, Dos Uruguitas. I don't know, I hope I say this right. Dos Uruguitas. You know, it's a gorgeous song. But Bruno topped the billboards. We don't talk like, okay. and I don't okay. get why Disney didn't, didn't submit it. I don't get that's it. That's why. That I feel like they didn't think that it would do as well as it did, Yo. and that's why they didn't submit it as for best song. I'm like, that's madness. Like, like I, I haven't even I haven't seen Encanto, but I <laughs> I know that song or by heart in my head. <laughs> I, I don't. That to me was a bit strange. I was like, you have like a number one billboard hit like when last did Disney mm. have a number one <laughs> hit <laughs> uh, um, and yeah yeah, Tick Tick Boom I think should have gotten also way more than it did um, yeah that's best supporting a actor definitely <laughs> also yes. it should have gotten best yes for, what, for everyone Robin to... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like for everyone <laughs> Uh, but the actor played Michael, especially like oh. he's the emotion in that role. Like, oh, I sure. I, I just feel like they did not watch the movie. I and that's what I you. feel like. I'm like, how could you? Like, I feel like somebody told them Andrew Garfield was very good in it, and they just went with that. And I agree with you. For me, I I wish that that um that Ruth Negger had gotten a nomination for passing because she was brilliant. I thought like I, I thought it was a hun- like I was nervous, but I was like, no, she's gonna get it. Um, I also wish that passing I got like best adapted screenplay because Rebecca Hall did such an amazing job. Also, I don't know if you have you seen Belfast. I haven't, but I've no interest in seeing it. I don't... But I just want to say like, um, a Judy Dench is like you know she's Judy Dench, but she's not the best supporting actor like the the, the lady from Outlander mm. you know what I'm talking about yeah, Katrina yeah. Balf Katrina Balf yes. she was so good in the film and if you were going to nominate anyone from that film it should have been her like Jamie Dornan was also good but he nobody was as good as her in my opinion even the Kieran Hines so I'm like why did he de- I feel like are you just putting names where are these people coming from uh, <laughs> but other than that like um, I think it's a lot about a lot of what you said. Um, my snubs are quite similar, but but definitely passing for me was such a great film, and mm. wish I'd gotten more love from the Academy. I just you know feel like people didn't watch it, or but I especially feel like people didn't watch Tick Tick Boom. No, yeah. but I feel um, the Oscars still have a bit of a what's the word? They're still a bit snobbish towards streaming films. A little but bit. But the dog. Again, that's exactly <laughs> true. Now that I think of it, yeah. I don't know. I just. Oh, another but I do snub. Get what you mean. Another snub, I would say Spider Man, No Way Home. Mm. Like, let's be honest, that's probably one of Marvel's. I think it beats Endgame in terms of the power of the script and the story. And, and I think honestly think Tom Holland should have gotten an uh, actor nomination for it like mm. he d- he did the film so well and again also it should have gone best picture I think in just in terms of scale and scale yeah and how this film also got people to the cinemas again you know mm. it is it was such a big film and I it, it comes back to the whole thing about you know is the Oscar still relevant just because it's mm. it was such it was the biggest film that's come out since, since the pandemic began, it broke records when so like mm. so many films were faltering, um, especially big blockbuster stuff. And Tom Holland, you you know you, 
you can see his talent in that form completely. Mm. And I I don't get it. I feel like he should have definitely gotten a nomination as well as Best Picture and maybe Best Directing, you know, because yo, that is a massive project to have done. Yeah. Like I didn't I don't want to know what their writing room looked like. <laughs> To try Probably and a mess. Cause... Piece everything together, <laughs> all the previous movies, uh-huh. and like, oh, it must have been, yeah. But they obviously threw so much money at it. So, mm. okay, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I hope we will get some surprises. The Oscars on the on March 27th, so it's like just over a month until the big show. And yeah, I hope it's not boring again. I hope we have some fun and it's not just one film taking everything. Um, Power of the dog. Um, yes. <laughs> but I hope Dune takes everything. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, ho- I really do hope that Dune gets rewarded for, for what it did. But, you know, before we go, I just wanted to do ask you... Okay, no, not before we go. We first still have to do Crashing On, but... Um, I want to ask you, who was your first celebrity crush? Oh, so I won't say it was exactly like a crush crush, mm. but like I was obsessed with Robin Williams. So obsessed as a mm. kid. Like I wanted to see all his movies. I think the film I remember the most was Hook. Yeah. You know, the Peter Pan. The Peter Pan. I, I, but like I just like made a mission to watch all his films. Like, I even went to the movies by myself <laughs> because no one else would. Like, I remember going to, to watch Patch Adams by myself because oh, no one else wanted to see it. And I was just like, yo. Yeah. And I just remember when he passed away, I was so devastated. Mm. I was like, that whole day, I was just like on the brink of tears. Mm. And every time someone like would ask me what's wrong, I'd be like, I can't tell you. <laughs> Because you're gonna judge me so hard, but like it was really bad. Like I had, it was such an emotional day for me. And yeah, sorry, I'm still emotional. No, it's I think it was just it was just such a a unique person. Mm-hmm. And um, my favorite role, of everyone was Genie. I think mm-hmm. he was so good in Genie. And but it's also a bit sad. Like I don't know if you read up on it. Like. He was so adamant with Disney that they sh- he shouldn't be used for the marketing. He shouldn't be mm. like the main focus of the marketing for Aladdin, because he just wanted he wanted to be in the form, be genie, but you know he didn't want to kind of take the power away from other voice actors. Because mm. before Aladdin, you know, voice actors you had proper voice actors. You know, it wasn't attached to big names. Yeah. Animations weren't sold on the names; they were sold on the concept mm. and stuff and he knew this and he was adamant with Disney that he shouldn't be the main focus of marketing and they didn't do that he they mm. like splashed everywhere Robin see Robin oh here Robin Williams and Aladdin and that actually changed how animations ended up becoming marketed they you know became more about the names now and then they got people who weren't actually traditional voice actors mm. um, and kind of taking a bit of a chunk of that away from good voice actors, you know, who really could pull out rabbits out of hats, you know, whereas traditional actors doing voice acting, you know, you can hear the actor and it's does, they don't disappear as much Mm. into the role and stuff. And I don't know, Robin Williams, I felt like he, he was just so passionate about the movie industry and, it was just really sad how he how he went, yeah. how it went for him. And there's a documentary that came out. I haven't watched it yet because I'm scared I'm going to cry too much. <laughs> um, so it's still on my list. So I haven't watched it yet. But, yeah, I would say so small. I was so obsessed with Robin Williams. That's a good obsession, though. Great movies. Yeah. <laughs> So before we go, um, what what have you been crushing on this week? Ironically, it does relate a bit back to the Oscars. <laughs> I am so obsessed with the Encanto soundtrack. 
<laughs> I've been listening to it on repeat. It's like I can't get that Bruno song is like permanently <laughs> stuck in my head at this point. And but I also feel like Surface Pressure, which is the song that um, the main Maribel's ma- uh, other s- sister, who's like the strong mm. girl who you know lifts everything. Her song is just so good, and I feel like it's kind of like overshadowed a bit by the Bruno song, but. <laughs> It's such a good song. It's like, you know, it's about all the pressure that's put on her and she's expected to just take on everyone's, like, burdens because she's so strong, but she's, like, kind of crumbling on the inside. Mm. You know, she she needs a break, but she doesn't know how to tell people because her worth is associated with what she can do for other people. Mm. So I just, that song is just so good. Um, and I, th- I think Lynn Manuel Miranda just killed it in Encanto. Mm. Um, He's had a so good year, good. and the fact that it, it yes, it was such a good year. So yeah, I wasn't expecting to like Encanto's music as much as I did, <laughs> but yeah, I've I've listened to that soundtrack so many times, just like <laughs> restart it. <laughs> um, for me, it's I I spent like I spent like two or three days watching inventing Anna and the story of Anna Dalvey and the scam she did. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm so excited. I mean, I don't know if it was good, but it was very addictive. Like the first, like I knew the story because I'd read the articles, but like the first two episodes, I'm like, meh, because her accent is very strange because it's like Russian, German, English. But anyway, I don't know. With by the third episode, I couldn't stop watching. I'm just like, I want to know. Even though I know what happens, it's like everything's this point. I want to know what happens. I want to know what people say. I want to know how they deal with this. And um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's a perfect show, but it's very addictive. Like last night, I dreamt about it. I was like, oh my gosh, Anna's gonna be in trouble. Anna's gonna get caught. So, <laughs> so if you like scammers, so, I think it's a, it's a, mm, it's a very interesting. Yeah, I actually listened to a podcast about her. Mm a few years ago and apparently her accent is that strange like she really does have such a weird accent Uh. and it's just such a weird story like I'm definitely watching but at first love is blind is first on the list (laughs) season of love I have to watch that too I haven't had a chance to watch that oh I love that show as well but um Gabi thank you so So much for being on the show Mm. uh, and sharing your insight yes thanks for having me um, yeah, it was really fun to, to chat about movies. I'm always down for chatting about movies. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was great. See you guys next week. One more thing. We will be hosting our first ever live, in-person, crashing on movie night on the 24th of February at Stir Kinnikor Cavendish in Cape Town. We'll be watching the film Blacklight, which is the new Liam Neeson action thriller and it follows Travis Block, played by Liam, who is a government operative coming to terms with his shadowy past. When he discovers a plot targeting US citizens, Block finds himself in the crosshairs of the FBI director he once helped protect. In order to be one of the crushing on listeners at the screening and meet us and have a good time, go to crushingonpodcast.com slash competitions and enter your details. It's going to be a fun night and we are so excited to meet you. This is the trailer for Blacklight. One day you wake up and realize you're not sure who the good guys are anymore. You're a federal agent involved in a secret FBI program. Off the books. What kind of bad stuff do you do? Breaking and entering. Physical coercion. You name it, I've probably done it. Murder? Not on my menu. Grandpa! Gabe, I've been thinking. Maybe it's time I hang it up. No. Travis, not an option. I know I wasn't a great father, but I'd like to be the best grandfather I can be. Natalie doesn't need a fixer like you. I've been writing about the story for over a year. The United States government is killing innocent civilians under the guise of protecting democracy. 
Under whose orders? The director of the FBI. How many more have to die for you to stop looking the other way? You need to come clean, Gabe. You're confused about our relationship. You are my weapon. You work for me. Count me out. You show me a little gratitude if you want a normal life. My end is now. Where's my family? If I find out you had anything to do with my granddaughter disappearing, you're gonna need more men. You'll be finished before that day is over. Everything I did was for you! Are you really gonna shoot me, Travis? Yes, I will. Grandpa, are you a good guy? I wanna be. Me, you can find at Karen Walby on Instagram, at Karen Walby's with an S on Twitter, and sign up for my newsletter, Wildest Dreams, at wildestdreams.substack.com. The podcast can be found at Crushing On Pod on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. You can find us at What's IGN Crushing On on YouTube, and you can find more information about this and all our other episodes on our website, crushingonpodcast.com. Send any feedback to mail at crushingonpodcast.com. And you can send us voice notes at plus two seven seven eight three six two two five six six. Join our Facebook group, Crushing On Club, where we chat about the show, celebrity news, recommendations, the whole shebang. The show is produced by me, Karen as well as Rebecca Barchers and Leanne Philipson. The show is edited by Rebecca Barchers. Our logo was designed by Nathifa Maruf, and the show was created in partnership with IGN Africa. If you like the show, tell everyone that you can, any way that you can. Keep up to date with episodes by subscribing to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please rate and review the episodes on Apple Podcasts, as it helps others to find the show. We'll be back next week with another in-depth conversation with a pop culture lover. See you then. Bye.